A lot of traders out there think that scalping is a high frequency trading strategy where there's multiple trades being opened at the same time or multiple trades being opened within minutes of each other. Now, whilst that is still a scalping approach, in my personal opinion, it's not a very sustainable approach. Now, my strategy, the DRS, the daily rule set strategy, is predominantly a scalping strategy, whereas some trades might linger on for like intraday length, where they might be running for a few hours. But the majority of the trades tend to be open for a very short period of time. Now, when it comes to scalping, we do not need to take a trade every single day. And this, in my opinion, and from what I've seen from many people that I've mentored over the years, is where a lot of people get scalping wrong. Now I want to show you something. Here is the metrics for a full year's worth of backtesting of the DRS strategy using FX Replay. Here we can see a nice steady equity curve, but that's not the focus for this video. What I want to show you is if we scroll down here, we can see a calendar map of how frequently we're taking trades. We can see which days were the winners. We can see which days were the losers. Now, if we were scalping how most people think we should be by taking multiple trades every single day, every one of these boxes, apart from the weekends, should have either a green or a red color to them, meaning that there's either a profit or a loss taken on that day. But it's not the case. When we are trading a rule-based approach, we want to make sure that all of the rules are aligned in order for a trade to be valid. If those rules are not met, quite simply, the trade is not valid. So we will not see a trade every single day if we are following a strictly rule-based system. Now there's one key area within this backtesting session that I have done that really stands out as a key point where if we was to fully understand the data that we've collected in our metrics, in our trading journal, then we should understand that not every single day is likely going to be a trading day. Now let's have a look at this month here. This is June 2023. Now, when I back tested this, we can see that there's probably a space of roughly eight days there with not a single trade. It's very likely two of those days are at least the weekend. So we've got two days where we can rule out that there is no trade or potentially three or four days, depending where the week overlaps. But that brings us to pretty much an entire trading week there were, where there was no valid trade set up. And it's not the only time this happens. We can see further up in March, we can see there was a nice big gap where there was no trades valid. The rules simply were not met and we stayed out the markets and protected capital. And again, we can see this happening in July. There's a, a nice long gap here, roughly a week's worth of trading days where there was nothing valid. Now, what we would then want to focus on is rather than trying to be in the markets every single day, multiple times a day, we should ideally be looking at the longevity of the strategy. Now, as traders, we want to be in this game for a long period of time. We don't want to be scalping for a couple of weeks and then think, oh, this strategy doesn't work. And then moving on to the next thing. We want to stay consistent. We want to fully understand the full ins and outs of our trading edge in order to stay on top of our game. And tools like FX Replay are perfect for this. The amount of data we are able to collect from our trading edge is just quite simply amazing. Now in particular, my favorite tool within the analytics is this page that I'm showing you here. This image is what keeps me grounded when I'm thinking, oh, I haven't taken a trade this week and I feel like I should be taking a trade. I always come back to these images where I can see, right, I have this data collected about my strategy. If I am trading live and there is no setup for that week, I know that that is a normal characteristic for this trading strategy. Now you won't know this about your trading strategy if you haven't gathered that data and information about your strategy. So if you are a scalper who spends a lot of the time on lower time frames and not much time in a trade, then this sort of data would be very, very valuable to your edge. Understanding the frequency of how often you should realistically expect to take a trade. Furthermore, we could then look on our analytics for FX Replay and we can see where our most common trading sessions are. So my strategy works both in London and New York. Now the only time it shows out of session here is when maybe I've taken a trade in a New York session and that trade has actually been active longer than expected. 
But with information like this, we can then start to narrow down exactly where our strategy works best. Do we have better opportunities during the London session or do we have better opportunities during the New York session? And when you understand this sort of information about your strategy, you would then be able to start identifying what is the better time to be trading. So if there is a significant difference with your London and New York sessions and you think actually London is more profitable, then that should be your trading session. If they're relatively equal, kind of like what we hear, then we know we can trade both of those sessions. Let's switch over to the charts. Let's have a look at a few examples where some of my scalping trades likely would not be setting up and I would need to be sitting on my hands waiting for those rules to be aligned. Now, the DRS strategy, I have done a full breakdown of that video. If you have not watched that, feel free to watch that afterwards or tap the link in the card at the top. And a lot of what I'm going to speak about next should then make some more sense. Now, I'm recording this on the day of the elections. And one of the things that has kind of put a bit of spanner in the works for me trading is the volatility that has been provided by the US elections. So if we have a look here, this gray box, this large gray box here, this is the Asia session. Now I have this figure down here, we can see 234.6. Now that means the Asia session had a range of 234.6 pips. Now the Asia session tends to average somewhere between 15 pips to maybe 30, 40 pips at max. Now we can tell that this is a very, very volatile session, Asia session, and as we can see so far, this is London, London hasn't really done a great deal because a lot of the high impact news or a lot of the fundamental drivers that caused the markets to move happened overnight when the votes were being counted for the US election. So because of this, because the Asia session was so broad and there was a lot going on, when we were looking for things like liquidity sweeps or continuations for our DRS trade setups, this posed a little bit more of a problem or a bit more of a challenge for us to find something clearer. Now, like I said, if you don't fully understand the DRS strategy, have a look at the DRS video after this and you will probably understand why I am looking at this and decided to stay away from the charts. But quite frankly, we can see the Asia low is here, the Asia high is here. One of the confluences I do like to see is a sweep of the Asia low or the Asia high. So for example, I would like to see Asia Asia being taken during the London session and maybe price starting to accelerate to the upside if I was going to be looking for a long trade. And on the flip side of that, I would like to see the Asia high being taken and then a nice push to the downside if I was going to look for a short. Now, just because an Asia high or low is being taken doesn't mean I'm only going to be looking for one direction. If we don't get this push back to the downside and we see price comfortably trending above the Asia high and I have a suitable target over to the left that I can reasonably aim for, then I'll be happy taking those continuation longs. But what we can then see is with what I've just spoken about there, we don't have that in this area. We did not have a liquidity sweep. We did not have a strong continuation for this bearish momentum. So quite simply, I stayed out of the markets. I was expecting the volatility with the elections and I was not going to be putting any capital at risk and going against my trading plan. So to summarize what I've just explained in this video, what I strongly recommend is if you are a scalper and you are trying to look for multiple trades every single day, then maybe try and tone it down a bit. Use tools like FX Replay to really scrutinize and backtest your strategy. Gather at least one year's worth of trading data for your strategy, and then you'll have a clear picture as how your strategy behaves over the course of an entire year. You would then be able to identify patterns within your trading. You'll be able to identify when you experience most losses, what types of losses you experience the most, whether you have a confluence like a liquidity sweep, change of character, stuff like that. You will be able to journal those trades and really scrutinize exactly what is going wrong with your strategy. So that will be all for today's video. If you have any questions or any comments you'd like to share, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. And if you found this video useful, drop a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.